if you are like, why is my success not here? I've been working so hard. Why isn't it here yet? Well, then my fellow sovereign, you got to listen to this episode on how to achieve success immediately. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Crown Yourself Podcast, where together we build your empire and transform your subconscious stories about what's possible for your business, body, and life. I'm your host, Kimberly Spencer, founder of crownyourself.com, and I'm a master mindset coach, best-selling author, TEDx speaker, known to my clients as a game changer. Each week, you get the conscious leadership strategies you need to help you reign with courage, clarity, and confidence so that you too can make the income and impact you deserve. Imagine this podcast as your royal invitation to step into your full potential and reign in your divine purpose. Your sovereignty starts here and your reign is now. Hello and welcome back to the Crown Yourself podcast. I am your host, Kimberly Spencer, founder of crownyourself.com, master mindset and communication coach. And I am so honored to be here with you as we dive into this challenge that I have had in the past and that I'm sure you faced as well that just gets so annoying. Like, you know, when you have that challenge, you're like, what? Why isn't it here yet? I feel like Charlotte in Sex of the City when she's like at the ta- at the breakfast table or, or maybe it's a luncheon. I don't know. But where she's like, I've been dating since I was 15. Why isn't he here yet? And she's like pulling out her hair. And it's so funny to me that that And I know whether it's in business or in your personal life, you're like, what the heck? Like, why is it not here yet? Why hasn't this happened for me? Well, I'm going to leave you with an ancient quote, and it is from the book Aphorisms of Yoga. And at first, it may want to make you punch me in the face. How about I just read it? And then you can decide if you want to punch me in the face. So here it is. Success is immediate where effort is intense. I know you want to punch me in the face, right? You're like, what? What? That book is trash. Yeah, but it's an ancient book. So, you know, let it be what it is. But so I shall go on. Success varies according to whether the effort is mild, moderate, or intense. The degree of intensity with which the yogi makes his effort gives him immediate or remote success. Unless his past karma intervenes, success generally is immediate. If, however, the yogi is sincere, if his effort is intense, the grace of God or the master intervenes and past karma is either condoned or postponed. Faith in God and his master removes all obstacles. So if you are saying currently, like, my efforts have been intense, what is up? And I will say intense how? Because there is such a difference between the intensity of doing and the intensity of doing the right things in the right order, right? So for example, if you're starting a business and you've been doing all the things, because when you start a business, you go from like the thing that you're really good at to also being the financier and the the bookkeeper and HR director and salesperson and CEO and all the roles. So suddenly you're in all the roles, graphics designer, social media manager, etc. So success is immediate where effort is intense. Now, the problem is, is if your intensity is in the wrong order or directed at the wrong thing, you will not have that success. Now, I'm going to give you an example. So story time. I was very, very intense with my efforts when I first started Crown Yourself back in 20. 14, 2015, I did the efforts of buying the domain. And I spent a pretty penny on crownyourself.com. I can tell you, like that, that was not a cheap domain name. And I put in the efforts of doing the Canva images and the photos and posting cool quotes on social media and doing all the other things. And I had all these other excuses too. I had really wonderful excuses. Like I'm also, I was also... I also still had my Pilates studio. I also had started a job teaching Pilates at another at another chiropractic's office because I didn't believe in myself, my own ability to run a business because this was like right after getting bought out of my company, um, my e-commerce company. And so I had all this self-doubt, all of this like shame, guilt, fear, fear of rejection, all of that. And so starting a company, not the best pl- place mindset wise to be in. 
but I did. And people saw it and they were like, oh, I love what you're doing. I love how you're so empowering. And I was quite frankly, I was like faking it until you make it. Like I did not feel empowered. I felt like such a fraud. I felt like all of my clothes for all of the photo shoots were rented or borrowed. Um, I had a stylist come in because I had nothing sparkly. Like I had to really like look at my identity and who I wanted to be. And In the midst of that identity crisis, though, I made a whopping $100 in my first year of coaching business. I at first thought I didn't make any money. And I know I've said that on past podcasts, but I since like went back and looked at our financial history of everything and kind of like how far we've grown. And I was like, oh, damn, I did. I made a hundred bucks. Like I thought I made at first I thought I made no money. And then I thought I made $15 from an ebook that I created Um, and that ebook did like no sales. And then I was like, did I really make $15? Or did I not know how to split test and test without paying for my own product? So I paid my for my own product. Um, And I'm pretty sure that that was what it was. But I did make $100 coaching a client. And back then, for me, like I was doing it out of my car in between Pilates sessions for both my own company that I'd had for years that I didn't even believe in, um, and for another person's company. And so my mindset like I was intensely working on a lot of things a lot of the time. And the problem was, was that I wasn't doing the intensity of the things that made me scared. Not having money didn't really scare me. I was used to that. I was used to not having that. Like I worked for two years in an e-commerce company as president. It was great. Um, But I my money mindset was shit. I made no money. The only time I made money was in the buyout. And I can say that now. I can say that now on podcasts. So when people saw like, oh, you're getting on magazines. And I was like, I am paying everything by a credit card because I am not getting paid by this company. Another very powerful lesson learned on the amount of intensity and also ensuring that that intensity is directed in the right direction. And if it's for a business, a business has to be making money or else it is a hobby. So the business for my crown yourself business, when I was in that, I was so deeply in shame, guilt and all the things that the one action that actually would have produced results and actually would have produced success stood in the way of my fear of rejection. And so even though I was so busy, like back then, my husband had a joke that I couldn't even sit down within 15 minutes of a Netflix show without just whipping up in my laptop and, you know, doing something. I have no idea what I was spending all my time on doing. That was, I have no idea. Like, because I I look at it now, I'm like, what was I doing at all that time? Like, what? Nothing got done. It was all productive procrastination. But the thing is, is that I was not doing the right things in the right order. And when you're just starting a business, the right things that you need to be doing is not a website. It's not building an app. It's not building a fancy website. It's not building all the funnels. It's not all of that. What you need, the one thing that you need is clients and customers. That's it. That's the one thing that you need to be doing until like you've hit a quarter of a million. Then once you start hitting that, then you need to put in more systems and operations into place and have a team and grow it from there. Yes, I always recommend starting with delegating at least one thing to get it off your plate, but you can get up to a quarter of a million without actually having a team. It just takes tenacity and it takes you doing the right thing in the right order. And the right thing when you're starting a business is getting clients and customers and then delivering on those promises to your clients and customers. That's it. So if success is not immediate, then your efforts may not have been as intense as you thought. Or your efforts may not have been the right efforts. Because here's the thing with the right efforts. You will know what the right effort is. And I can't tell you what the right effort is for you at 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 the stage of your life or your business unless we were working together in a one-on-one capacity. But for wherever you are in the context of this podcast, the only way you can discern what the right best next action is for you and the level of intensity in which to approach it are these two questions. One, what is the activity you are avoiding? 
What is that one activity, that one thing you are avoiding? So for example, with me in the beginning stages of my coaching business, what I was avoiding was actually talking to people. People scared the crap out of me. I was so scared of talking to people and ha- getting rejected because I had just felt like such a massive rejection from my former business partner, my company. I felt like a failure. I felt so deeply rejected because I lost that company, something I'd put two years of unpaid labor into, like, yes, it had, it was a quarter of a million dollar startup, and I made nothing until I was bought out. So the intensity of what I was putting into my coaching business was everything that could dance around the actual thing that would bring in clients and customers. I had business cards that said CEO and my The greatest come to Jesus moment was when my one of my Pilates clients, who was is a big director of photography on like massive, massive major movies, was like, I was like, ooh, you want to see my new business card? He's like, yeah. And I saw my business card. He's like, CEO of what? And I was like, dagger to the heart. He was right. I was putting all my efforts into other things that didn't fucking matter. What matters is the thing that you're avoiding. That also, here's the second question, what is the thing that will require the most amount of courage? Because it's not about the effort on the physical plane solo. It is about the emotional effort. The emotional effort. Sometimes the emotional effort, quite frankly, is to forgive. Like sometimes that is the emotional effort. Sometimes that is the thing that you focus 100% on to move to that next level because that's the thing that's blocking you. That it's that emotional next level. So what is the thing that will require the most amount of courage from you? For me, that was talking to people. (laughs) I had to go back to like heal my inner child from first grade back when I didn't talk to anybody and remember what my mom said, which was the lesson for me was go out, to 10 people and say hello to 10 people with their names. That was it. Like I had to do that. (laughs) And then once I did, and I did that intensely for like a week, two weeks, and suddenly I got my first $2,000 client. And suddenly then I got another $5,000 client. And suddenly like it just started racking up. But it wouldn't have happened had I not done the one thing that scared me was put myself out there to get rejected, was to collect those, those no's to allow myself to have that experience. And then once I did, suddenly, ba-bam. So what is that thing that you're avoiding? I can tell you, having coached most, uh, mostly entrepreneurs <laughs> for the past nine years, but visionaries, leaders, a lot of times the thing that most people are avoiding is a difficult conversation. Like 95% of the time, it's having a difficult conversation whether that's the difficult conversation of putting yourself out there for a lead gen offer or putting yourself out there, you know, or or sharing something deep and, and true for you inside of your marriage that you feel like there could be shame or guilt about. Or maybe it is something for your body of asking for actual support and help and like, or it's firing a doctor that prescribed you something because that shit didn't work. So there can be many things. But what is the thing, one, that you're avoiding, and two, that requires you to summon the most amount of courage? Because as I've said before on multiple podcasts, courage is the emotion that tips the vibrations from all of the negative emotions below it. So shame, guilt, fear, anger, pride, grief, all of those courage is that tipping point into the higher vibration. And the thing is, is that an one act of courage counterbalances heaps of shame, heaps of guilt, heaps of of anger, any of the lower vibratory emotions, because it's, it's exponential. The higher vibratory emotions of courage, even just neutrality, even acceptance, not speaking of like love, peace, bliss, those massive emotions, but just courage, it tips the scale exponentially. And then it just goes up from there, tipping the scale exponentially. So operate every day 
in that courage and you will start to see really fast results, really radical results. Now, I know I love interacting with you inside our community. Um, I want to know from you, what is that one act of courage that you have been avoiding that you know you need to take? What is that? Maybe it's a conversation. Maybe it's doing the dang thing and launching the business. What is that one act of courage? What is that thing that you've been avoiding? And let me know. I'm putting the email down below, email info at crownyourself.com. I really, truly look forward to seeing your responses. And I'm so grateful for your listenership and for you accepting the challenge to rise into your reign. It's super easy to stay in apathy, to live at a a vibration of fear, anger, guilt, shame. Those are all super easy. The world will let you live in those happily. Well, not happily, but complacently. It takes a lot of courage to choose to go for something big, to choose to lean into your dream, to choose to find love, compassion, joy, to choose to have those courageous conversations, to choose to rip the bandaid off instead of let a gangrenous wound fester. I honor your courage. Thank you so much for being here. And as always, if you love this episode, please share it with a friend. Share it with a friend who needs a little heaping dose of courage, whose success may be taking a little bit more time than they would like. And with that, as always, own your throne, mind your business, because your reign is now. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If what you heard resonated with you, be sure to subscribe and start creating a bigger impact now by sharing this with a friend. Just by doing that one simple act of kindness, you are creating a royal ripple to support more people in their sovereignty. And if you're not already following on social media, connect with me everywhere at crownyourself.now for more inspiration. I am so excited to connect with you in the next episode. And in the meantime, go out there and create a body, business, and life that rules. Because today, you crown yourself.